The Oregon Ducks made a national statement Saturday after they defeated the Ohio State Buckeyes, but did their quarterback Dylan Gabriel make a statement to the Heisman voters and put his name back in the conversation? Let's go ahead and dig into the tape and talk about his performance against, against Ohio State and how this is going to be seen throughout the draft process, where he can go, not just for the, the entire draft, but how best to utilize his skill set. We know Oregon does a really good job of maximizing different quarterback skill sets look at Bo Nix last year and you know all the way back to the times of Marcus Mariota maybe they're not the best NFL quarterbacks but what's going to be able to separate Dylan Gabriel in that regard so we see here a nice little seam ball that he probably could have gotten out a little bit earlier that's one of the things that we're going to talk about that he actually struggles with on the left hand side of the offense you have a little bit of a switch release with the with the uh, stack receiver formation on the top here and come to the inside get it vertical just a little bit take it to the seam outside receiver un underneath receiver excuse me is going to take it more of a fade route it's almost the exact same little concept on the back side here take it to the seam and then you're going to fade away on the underneath receiver and Gabriel's going to do a nice job again. We're getting this ball over the middle of the field where he does struggle at times to get this ball down in the intermediate parts of the field because he's a bit small. I know he's listed at 5'11". I don't believe that he's 5'11". He looks a lot shorter behind the offensive line. And this, again, could have come out a tad sooner, but it's well placed above any DBs where the receiver's allowed to go get the football and shield himself from any real contact. So here again, thrown up, you go get it, and then you kind of tuck your shoulder away. As some of these smaller receivers at Oregon, we've seen Evan Stewart right there comes down with a nice ball down the seam. So we have the play action. He's looking at that underneath defender. He, again, he could have thrown this a little bit sooner. Anticipation's where he's going to get a little bit and has to develop just a little bit more, in my opinion. To really hit some of these opening and how tight windows close in the NFL, you want to see him continue to get better at that. Because I do think there were some flashes in this game where he had some of the quick release, he had some of the anticipation, but just some of these windows you're going to have to test a little bit earlier as you get further. Right here, again, nice little movement to the left side. It comes up back to the right hand and hits the receiver over the middle down the field. So we have a little bit more of seeing what's happening. So... This is a three receiver concept to the right side, and they're going to change it to a two, a two by a two by two formation. So this underneath receiver is going to stretch out to the left hand side. You have this uh, slot receiver is going to come up to the middle of the field, almost to that seam, and then you have the outside receivers taking more of a slant on the outside, and then underneath you have just a couple of. Tight end, running back, giving, giving the quarterback some time here. This is a longer developing route, so you're going to need more time to be able to take advantage of that. And so here he steps out to the left after going, you know, making that play. We've seen it a lot where snaps high, you have to be able to adjust to that. And so he looks left first initially. So he's got eyes here, even though there's no receiver out here. And what does that do? Well, you still need to be able to move some players with your eyes. So initially you've got the play action concept, and then you've got Dylan Gabriel looking to his left and he's going back to his right. He knows he's going back to his right. Cause that's where your route concept is. So he steps up and this is where I would, again, I have loved to seen him throw this football. Now receivers breaking on the, on the in route, right here throw the football the ball should really be out already because this is what you see as that quarterback receiver coming up here the dbs are following with this way so you've got him stretching out that way opening up the middle left hand side or right hand side of the field right there down that seam throw the football get it out quickly to your receiver then let him go make a play now this continues on as we we see him step up, kind of clutch a little bit because he wasn't ready to throw it, and then he's able to use his quick release, which I think he's got mechanics-wise, a very quick, repeatable release that allows him to be on time with some of these throws and then able to get through a lot of what he's got to do to be able to make guys like you know JT Tulumalawa right here at the bottom right of your screen who's going to come up and get a little bit of pressure on him. Or, and when you're clutching that football right there, and then you're able to quickly get that football out, that's where that quick release comes in handy. So you're able to get that football down the field. So two good deep shots against Ohio State's defense right there and showcasing what he can do when you give him a little bit more time. And he's a good enough athlete to make time for himself as well. And this is really where I loved to see the pre-snap process go for him because I think he did a really nice job of using all of the time that he's played in college football, being a little bit of an older prospect, you know, playing at UCF first and then having that gruesome injury transferring to Oklahoma. And now at Oregon, where we're seeing some of this come down. This is Evan Stewart on the 
top of your screen. It's a little bit of a double move against Denzel Burke. Going to get him biting. But what you see right here is the pre-snap identification of the defense where you have these hold defenders that are pretty close, right? You say these are pretty close to the line of scrimmage in terms of where they typically are. That's play recognition that he sees. He's going to be able to take a shot over the top as long as Evan Stewart does a good job with his double move right there. You know, a little cu curl and go. Just a little stop and go. Boom, right there. He stops, gets it out, and then that's where we see the release. Clears right by the DB and drops it right in the bucket. He did have to slow down just a little bit. The, uh, the arm strength outside the numbers is not consistent and we we've seen already the three throws that he's he's put on tape for, for us right now there's not a ton of zip he's more of a placement accuracy type of quarterback and when you can play a little bit with better timing like he's going to be able to so i think that he's going to be able to take advantage of the quick release and some of the experience that he has but right now i do think that he's got to develop more of that anticipation because you're not going to get some of these deep throws and some of these open windows that you're going to have at the next level they're going to close a lot faster and this is an example of those tight windows and how these throws translate to the next level we've seen him beat zone beat some man coverage downfield when you get a busted coverage how are you going to be able to adapt when an, a defense comes at you with a couple of different defensive looks and they play close tight man coverage you have to be able to get through your reads and get to the right player and he passes up what i think could have been a big play again you have to understand you're going to get hit sometimes and you got the safety a little bit shaded to the inside play where he initially wants to go with the football. I think he should. Anyway, you have the running back out of the backfield is going to have this, you know, this wheel route right here. They're going to clear out. So receiver is going to take a little post route right here. You have the underneath receiver on the back side is going to, excuse me, the, the slot, the slot closest to the offensive line receiver is going to come more of an angle and take this down to the seam on the opposite side. They motion the outside receiver in. He's going to do a little bit of up and then make this more of a crossing in route right here. And then you have who becomes the number one receiver on that side is just running a little bit of a out push and then slant across the middle of the field. There's two plays, two places that you can go with the football. Initially, he's going to look to his right where you have that running back on the wheel route. That's where he should go with the football. It just makes the most sense right here. He's looking. He takes his eyes off of it. So when he looks right here, this is what you get. Running backs in a clear. And then you look at the DB, the safety right here in the middle of the field, whose hips are starting to turn towards the opposite side of the field. They're starting to turn this direction to where... Okay, he's going to go that way a little bit, mostly because the eyes are starting to move that way. But you have to see this running back is going to clear the underneath defender and hit open down the right-hand sideline. So I'd love to see him take that shot right there. Instead, he turns it down. And because he took a little bit longer to get to the right-hand side and then getting back to the left to go back through his backside reads, he ends up throwing this football here where there is no separation. Where you really want to get to is your backside in route or your backside slant route. This is what you really want because he's got the most separation. He has the most. So, again, turning down that wheel route to the running back ends up causing a little bit more of a cause and effect here where you have him taking an option underneath that isn't open and then forcing a ball to that tight end where you want to see him get through his reads a little bit faster. So, when you're not taking some of these chances on some of these tighter window throws with, again, anticipation, you're going to have some of these plays against tight man coverage. And that, again, going to the next level, you're probably going to see more of it and better of it, especially even though Ohio State's got pretty good DBs. I think Burke struggled a little bit in this game against Evan Stewart. Uh, David Igbenosen played pretty well. And then you saw a couple of these tight ends for Oregon struggling to get open against man coverage. So when you're not able to take advantage of some of the quickly being able to process through your, your reads and maybe turning down a play or two here, it does have an impact and you can get to Dylan Gabriel that way. And, and then, you know, over the middle of the field throws too. part of the process and need to be able to pro progressing to your backside dig. That's where you want to be able to get through that and not get stuck on some reads. So the, Oregon loves to throw the football down the field. That's what they want to do. And then what you have right here is, let me go back to the beginning so we can get a clear shot of what this looks like before the motion. There we go. Number 14, motion's inside now. Then from that inside, he's going to run this inward out route. Outside receiver is going to take this up down the seam. And then the underneath tight end, a little bit of a chip to the flat 
So this back, th this left side of the formation is what he's reading out first. On the opposite side, you have just a little bit of outside hitch release, boom, inside, where he's going to clear open over the middle of the field. So Dylan Gabriel takes a little bit too long in his process right here. Play action, he's looking to the left. Again, he's locked in right now. You can see the DBs are playing off. In this instance, get to your backside read. You know you had press man coverage there, so you don't have to get through your reads as fast. And that's where he should have gone. Boom, go one, two, three. Maybe even skip the underneath route or and go right to the backside dig and get there and get the ball out. He eventually gets there, but you've got a little bit of, of pressure in his face at that point. Takes off and runs, even though he probably still could have gotten the ball out to that backside dig over the middle field. So right here again, going left, lock, lock, lock. We, we want to get to the, the, this throw now. Get it here, get it now. Get a little bit earlier, you want to be able to throw it right here referee will get out of the way and if he doesn't it's his own fault so that's typically what we see that you know those refs stuck down like that so dylan gabriel just get through your reads a little bit faster and then being able to take advantage of some of those man coverage looks that you get when you have a running back on a linebacker on a wheel route just some improvements with anticipation you can't improve your arm strength to for for a certain extent so take advantage of what you can good ball placement i think he's got a pretty good mental understanding of defenses as we're going to see Right here, on the right-hand side of the offensive line, you see a little bit of an overload situation. That motion out, we see if they break into more of a zone. And he's going to beat it here on third down to get a first down. A nice throw, a nice a job understanding what you're seeing. When you have, even if this is man coverage, this is a good option because you're going to get that clear out fade down the left-hand side with a little bit of just an out route right underneath it, creating space, taking advantage of it. But since they go into a more of a, a zone right here, David Igbenosin is much more of a physical player. He's getting hands on that outside just to throw off the timing of the release. Also, if the throw gets back that way, that safety has a lot of room to cover. So he doesn't want to give him a free release. So he takes advantage of that. And the underneath receivers get in, into that space. And what we like to see from Dylan Gabriel is, again, you've seen him looking at the uh, defensive line, everything looks like it's coming out this way. When they motion out, they back out, and this is where that zone comes in. So you have the defense, number zero's making it look like it's uh, man coverage, but number six is actually dropping out. So that shows you, okay, it's not going to be a true man coverage, and Gabriel does a nice job throwing this right to the, the flat route on the opposite side, getting that first down. So pre-snap, adjusting when you see those different defensive players run out and then he does a nice job of beating that coverage right there where just a really nice getting back quick throw for a first down so operating at that high level i think that he consistently did against ohio state shows you that he's i guess especially against his own coverage he can he can find those soft spots he can attack them and he can get to them when you play that way against them and i loved to see him consistently take advantage of that against ohio state and really throw the football down the field and find the matchup problems that Ohio State is going to eventually give you a little bit. And he did. He picked on Burke, number 10 right here for a DB for Ohio State. He picked on him a little bit. They motion the receiver all the way out to the right-hand side. And when you do that, specifically for an offense, you're giving yourself a one-on-one, 100% -on -one, opportunity. There's nobody else that can get out there quickly enough. So Ohio State ends up bringing a lot of pressure on this play. They're showing you know, that overload, and then he's going to – Right here, you see the uh, defense, again, pretty close to the line of scrimmage. Looks like we got a lot of pressure coming at you in some way, shape, or form. And he brings it down here. Running back does a nice job of buying him enough time, as you want to see. And then he just understands. You've got man coverage, lots of players at the line of scrimmage inside the box there. You know, you've got a curl route. Evan Stewart does a nice job of backing off that outside release to the curl. And then using just a little bit of push him up the field just a little bit it's more of a, a disengagement than an actual push so really good job of getting through that seeing that that blitz is coming and then jordan james picking up the blitz giving your quarterback just a half second longer to be able again he's looking left initially first comes back to the right throws the football out there and gets it to evan stewart without suffering the sack there so sack avoidance he's a good athlete in the pocket he can make guys miss and not just in the pocket but outside the pocket we know he is a dual threat quarterback and he's fully healthy right here does a really nice job 
taking advantage of the defensive end crashing that line of scrimmage. And then when it's in open field, he can make guys miss in space as we've seen time and time again. So just got to keep your responsibility there as the defensive player. And I don't think they ran a ton or any of it at this point, but what you got to do again, you just got to got to be a little bit more cognizant of where this could go because you do have that quarterback who's going to come out here and make you miss and make you pay with that. So good job from Gabriel being able to, just take this, boom, pull it out, and then right there, number eight got no shot. He's just very, he's very elusive in the open field as a guy. Again, he doesn't look like he's five eleven. I just don't believe that for a second. So that's going to be a part, an important part of the process is identifying he's a little bit smaller, doesn't have the true arm strength to rip throws into tight windows. You have to take advantage of that and show him all the zone that the NFL plays and all these defensive plays. He can win and still beat these defenses with his mind and then throwing with anticipation and then i get i think he did a really good job of taking advantage of looking to one way and throwing to the opposite way down the field really good job of putting this in the bucket for their his receiver down there so you know tez johnson right there beating a little bit of again beating up on burke and when you get out there so all the things that he does well he exemplifies what beating a defense with your mind at this point is because he doesn't have the physical tools with your arm to be able to just rip throws in there and beat close coverage and beat these windows that end up closing. But he did a, a very good job of executing at what Ohio State gave him. And then again, looking to his left here, throwing it down the field to his right, stepping up in the pocket and just staying in there, making a defense pay. So this performance was a really good one from Dylan Gabriel. I don't, do I think he's going to win the Heisman Trophy? No, I think that he's going to continuously put up really good numbers at Oregon. The offensive system is really good for him. The weapons around him, they have speed. They have the ability to throw the football down the field and they've been able to protect him, which is a huge part, especially against a team like Ohio State that's going to heat you up and try to win against you with just pressure off the edge and then taking advantage of those blitzes and trying to get their corners on your receivers. We saw the receivers win in this one and then Dylan Gabriel take advantage of that down the field. So I still think that those limitations are going to show up when it comes to draft day, but this is a really good performance to help put him on the map from a mental perspective, identifying those blitzes, identifying the coverage and taking advantage of it. Those things also show up on draft day and in the NFL. So Dylan Gabriel is going to have to find a little bit of a little bit better anticipation and take advantage of some of those windows that consistently happen or those wheel routes that we saw of the running back out of the backfield. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of Dylan Gabriel. If you're new to the TDN channel, please go over there, hit that sub button right now, hit the like on the way out, and I'll see you guys next time.